I'm gonna show you one of the coolest things on my Jeep. Check this out. You guys have seen the Trail Gator before, but if you've seen that yet, <laughs> ever since I saw Dan Grek on the road chose me and he had his little setup inside of his Trail Gator, the Trail Gator table gives you just a little bit of room between the table and the back. And uh, I was like, I gotta have one of those. Now, there's a couple online tutorials, but I didn't find any videos on how to do this. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you can set up one of those. So here's everything you're gonna need for this project. First, you're gonna need a piece of a backing board. So it could be a piece of wood, it could be masonite, it could even be a piece of plastic. Uh, 10, 10 by three quarter inches by 24 inches. And then you'll need to get a rivet gun if you don't own one. I didn't. Uh, 3 16 rivets is, is good. Get aluminum ones, and then you'll need a drill with a 3 16 bit for those uh, rivets. Uh, I grabbed a box of number 10 washers, got some one inch flat wide elastic, uh, and then you'll need some scissors to cut the elastic and a lighter. And then you're gonna wanna cut your board down to size. Next. You have to decide what you're gonna put on this thing. The whole reason you have this thing on your tailgate is so that you can quickly get to things. Uh, for me, what I decided to go with was uh, kitchen stuff. And so uh, I've grabbed a bunch of exchangeable barbecue skewers. I got some knife forks so that we get something to eat with. Uh, I needed a folding spatula for barbecuing and the other essential barbecue tool for me are tongs. Gotta have those, burgers, sausages, tongs, and spatula. I could not resist putting a multi-tool on here because this is on my tailgate all the time. Who, why not reach down and grab a multi-tool? My problem with multi-tools, a lot of them don't have a corkscrew. So I also included a server's tool, uh, a lighter. Never know when you're gonna need a lighter. Uh, I've got this hermetically sealed salt and pepper shaker that I just love, so happy to stick that on here. A couple of different knives, one for cutting and one for slicing bread and spreading. A pair of scissors, again, you never know when you're gonna need this. And then I filled up the rest with collapsible cups and bowls. Uh, so I've got six cups and bowls all fit here. But this is just my configuration. You can do whatever you want back here. Why not, for example, make it a customized toolbox? You can put any kind of tools you want on here. You can have the exact tools you need right there in your tailgate. Hey, maybe you're out in the field a lot and or you got kids at soccer games always scraping themselves up on the playground. Why not put a medical kit in there? And I mean, hey, since it's a Jeep, I mean, what I was thinking is like, what if it was recovery gear? That'd be kind of cool. Put a bunch of recovery gear right in your tailgate. But since we're talking about Jeeps, we all know what Jeeps really need. 10 millimeter wrenches. Why not just put all your 10 millimeter in your tailgate? You too, my friend, can never lose a 10 millimeter again. Or why not? Smoking room. Turn your tailgate into the ultimate smoker's man cave. Or better yet, a mini bar. Is it a tailgate or a party? You decide. Honestly, you could do anything. we've decided on the items that we are going to put on the trail gator here i was just using some of the washers to kind of mark where i want the straps to go because if you've got something weird like my spinner fork as my kids call it <laughs> it's a it's a spoon fork with a little knife here which by the way i'm a little worried it might cut on the elastic but not too worried i mean i can always replace it if that's the case um i want to put the elastic at the same distance that the fat part of the fork can pull all the way out. Um, I still think it'll hold it on the board just fine. And then of course my bowls, which I know is a kind of a weird thing to have on this trail gator, but I just like the idea of having everything I need for dining on it, uh, because that's primarily what I imagine we're going to be doing. And if this setup ends up not being the one that I'm using most of the time, I realized I could just pull the whole thing off, cut another piece of board. I could even keep this one and uh, created a whole different setup. So this is kind of neat. It's uh, kind of like a Lego. But anyway, for these bowls, I just wanted to make sure that I was able to sort of put the straps in and then leave room on either side for the other items that I want to put on there. So now we're going to make some marks. I just took a Sharpie and made little dots inside each of the washers. 
And I noticed that when I finished and started removing the items, I had to take notes as to where the items were, because just looking at a board with a bunch of dots isn't very helpful. Then I got a ruler and I took some lines just so I remembered where everything was and was putting the elastic on right. Then all you got to do is drill some holes. So this is my first time uh, using a rivet gun. I've never used one of these before. We are using 3 16 rivets. These things here, they look like this, like a little sword that I would have loved to have when I was like eight years old so my G.I. Joe guys could have like a sword. <laughs> but um, this rivet gun comes with two little attachments. So you can take off one. And at the end of the attachments, they I don't even know if you can see that. It's really small. But in any case, um, this is a 1 8 rivet. We want the 3 16 rivet because that's the right size for our rivets. Not sure you can see that, but um, yeah, it looks like you just screw that into the rivet gun like so. And then I've seen some other rivet guns. I did go online <laughs> and watch people do this. I've done this before. Um, and some of these rivet guns have like a little wrench to tighten them on. This one does not. I assume the power of your hand is enough. So um, let's see how this works. You put the rivet in long ways first. What you want to do is take your elastic that you're going to secure your things with. You're going to make a little hole in it, fit it over the rivet, and then put the washer over the elastic. So I'm going to make a hole in this, put the washer over it, that's going to go over the rivet like that and then i'm going to take this this piece of elastic is going to hold a few things on it's going from this hole to that hole so i'm just going to cut myself a little bit of extra slack and then we'll see what happens one of the easiest ways to uh, cut a hole in elastic is to fold it in half and just get some scissors and cut that there and when you cut that you get your nice little hole now, with rivet gun, uh, washer, rivet, and piece of elastic on hand here, what you want to do is you want to put your rivet in the rivet gun, and then you always want to go from the back of the board, not the front, because the back is where the clearance is going to be for the trail gator. This is our hole that we're working on here, so we're going to go right through there to this side, and then we're going to get our handy-dandy elastic here. Stick that on there, and uh, I'm going to take our washer, fit that right over. Okay, well, that seems to have worked. Look at the back, we got a, a nice clean rivet there on the back, and on the front, we've got our thing in place. It's not going anywhere. Nice. So I found it a little hard to operate the... Uh riveter gun and hold the washer on there. So I got some help uh, from my trust, trusty companion here. So now he's holding those on and I'm coming around the back and doing the rivets and that seems to be working. So if you can get somebody to help you with this part, it's very helpful. I wanna make a special mention that it's really important for you to hold the washer as low as you can against the fabric because if the fabric bunches up under the washer and you run the rivet, the rivet won't bulge out enough to hold this. We put this one on three times before we got a good solid uh, rivet holding that washer on there. So if you can get a second person to help you hold the washer down while you're doing the, riv the riveting to keep this fabric from lifting the washer past the point where it will bulge over and hold it, you should definitely do that. Now that I've got uh, my two bits of elastic in, the scissors are going to go here. And so what I want to do is I want to stretch the elastic over, kind of hold it where that next rivet is going to be, and figure out where I need to cut the elastic to put the other rivet through. So um, I'm going to guess that that's going to be stretchy like that. Yeah, that's going to be fine. And then I'll just point a bit of the scissors. It gives me a little bit of pause here because I'm wondering... Um, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So now that I've measured the length of the elastic that I need, I gave myself a little extra before I cut it so that I wouldn't be working with the hole the whole time. Because I know that's where the rivet's going, I'm going to cut this off just a little bit past there because I don't need this extra elastic. Um, this is a little bit of a waste of elastic. And um, you want to burn the edge of, the, of this so that it melts a little bit so that you don't... Uh, so that you don't have any fraying going on. There you go. 
That's all you need to do. Just kind of melt that down a little bit and that way it won't fray. Now that I've got the first strap of elastic on, we're gonna see if these four things fit. Have a look. So uh, our scissors would go here. And then, and like I thought, yeah, the pointy scissor does create a little bit of an issue, but it's not a big deal. A purple knife, ooh, that's nice. That goes right in there. Um, and then we've got our tongs, which fit. Those will be great for barbecuing. And then our knife. Hey, that looks pretty good. Right on. So you'll definitely want to be able to drill out these holes in the table um, in the backing of your accessories. So make sure you get this thing lined up the way it should be and then fold this down and mark the holes here and then drill them out on the board so that you can mount it. The final part, of course, is to get the board and the trail gator back onto the tailgate. Um, I've started just the screws at the top here. I'm gonna put the rest in. I can't tell you how gratifying it is to be at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we'll put all the things in and then we'll be able to open it up and man, this is gonna be so cool. <laughs> One thing I will say is that it is a lot easier to put things into these straps when it's actually attached to the tailgate and not moving. I found it a little challenging to uh, stick the things in when it was flat and the board was sliding around underneath you, but now that it's on here, it's so easy to stick the stuff in. It's great.